So what is a Poisson process? Well, let's look at a general random process, which might be, for example, the temperature in a room, and that varies continuously with time. It's random, but it's a continuous function. So Poisson processes deal with something different to this. They deal with processes that are discrete and they are called random point processes and they occur at particular times. So let's draw one, for example, that occurs here. Another event occurs here. Uh, randomly, these events are occurring in time. They either happen or they don't happen. Uh, so this is a different type of process to the general random process. In this case, could be example of people arriving at a bus stop, for example, the times when they arrive at a bus stop, uh, packets arriving at a network switch, for example, or mobile phone users wanting to start a phone call in a mobile cell. And these are the times when those events happen. So a Poisson process looks at events. Now these events are constant, uh, known constant mean rate events. So this means that they, they are random, but over a certain period of time, there is a known mean rate of those events happening. Also, the events happen independently. That's an assumption of a Poisson process. So that, that means that these events don't happen in relation to other events. So if there are people arriving at a bus stop, for example, then we're not including situations where groups of people arrive or people come with their friends. It would only apply as a Poisson process if the people all arrived independently of each other and randomly with this constant rate. Okay, so what do we want to know about this and how do we characterize this kind of process? Well, there are two ways we can look at this, and one of which is to look at a period of time. And so we might want to look at a particular period of time and ask ourselves how many events happen in that period of time and or what is the probability of a certain number of events happening in that period of time. And for this, we are going to have the Poisson distribution. You also might want to look at the time between events. So this I'm going to draw with a line above here, actually be going between two particular events. And we might want to know about the probability of that time between events. And this one is the exponential distribution. We'll come back to that later. So here's the Poisson distribution. And we have the probability of the number for, for the random process, the Poisson process X, this is the probability that K events happen in the time period of interest. Okay, and that probability is equal to lambda to the power K exponential minus lambda K fact divided by K factorial. And here, lambda is the expected number of events over the time interval of interest. And sometimes we can uh, write this as the rate times the time. Well, we can do that if we know what this rate is. Okay, but lambda in general is the expected number of events over the time interval for whichever time interval you're choosing to look at. Um, if you've got a particular time, you can multiply it by the rate. And a property of this distribution is that the mean value equals lambda and the variance also equals lambda. So again, the Poisson distribution is about discrete numbers of events. So K would equal one event. That would be the probability that one event happens during the time interval that you're interested in. And of course, if you're interested in different time intervals, then they will have different values of lambda. So this is this Poisson distribution about discrete events. And there's some interesting things about the Poisson distribution. For example, if you have uh, a random... Uh, variable that has a Poisson distribution with a, uh, a, a rate, a, a lambda, lambda i, then if you sum them up, if you have n of those and you sum them up, if you sum up those random variables, then the resulting random variable is also Poisson distributed with a variable of the summation of those lambdas. 
So that's a nice property that is sometimes useful when looking at uh, queuing theory uh, in communications and many other applications. In this case, it could be that you have multiple types of traffic all coming into the same queue. So if you had one type of traffic, let's say voice calls with, with packets coming at the packet rate of voice calls, and that would give you one of the lambdas, the lambda that relates to voice calls, and another might be video, which is much higher rate of sampling, and then the uh, this would be a different lambda for the video calls, but if they're both coming into the same switch, if packets uh, from those both data sources are coming into the same switch, then you know about the uh, distribution of the uh, packets in that switch is going to be still Poisson distributed with the a parameter that's the sum of those two lambdas. So that's a very important uh, property in that case. Um, one other thing to say is uh, that um, events, should have said before, events can't happen at exactly the same time. That's another assumption of the Poisson process. So we've talked about the number of events that happen over a given time interval. This was Poisson distribution. What about this other one we were interested in, which is the time between events? And this has an exponential distribution. And this is given by this formula here. So this is the PDF for an exponential distribution. And it looks very similar to the Poisson, uh, but different. And here, lambda is the rate parameter. So over here, lambda was the rate times the time interval over which you were looking. But here, lambda is the actual rate parameter. So that's important not to get confused. Now I've drawn them this with the lambdas here like this because in textbooks you'll find this formula and you'll find this formula. But I wanted to point out that it's important to, to know that when you're looking at a Poisson distribution, the lambda is the rate times the time interval over which you're looking. But when you're looking at the exponential distribution, the lambda is the rate. In this case, we find that the expected value for the time between the events is 1 divided by lambda, and the variance is 1 divided by lambda squared. So the standard deviation is the same as the expected value for the exponential distribution, whereas over on the Poisson distribution, it was that the variance was the same as the expected value. And this is often confusing between the two. Let's just remind ourselves, the Poisson distribution is about discrete number of events that happen over a time period, whereas the exponential distribution is a continuous distribution for the time between events. So this is a continuous parameter, x here, and this k here is a discrete parameter. So it's important difference between the two. And just one final thing to say about this exponential distribution, which is often mentioned and, and very interesting and worth thinking about, and that is that the exponential distribution is a memoryless distribution. And what do we mean by this? Well, here, let's look at this. This is the probability of the event, of the time between events being bigger than s plus t, given that the time is bigger than s. So let's look at this probability here. So what does this mean in practice? How can we think of an example of this? Well, let's say you're a switch and you're waiting for a new packet to arrive so that you can switch it in the network. If you've already waited s seconds, then the probability of waiting a further t seconds in addition to the s that you've already waited, so that probability of waiting a further t seconds is the same as the probability of waiting for t seconds from the start. So that's very interesting, it's called a memoryless property here. So what it tells you is, is even if you've already waited s seconds, and you know that a packet hasn't come in the first s seconds, the probability that you'll have to wait a further t seconds is the same as the probability of having to wait t seconds from the start. And so this is uh, uh, something that's worth thinking about. Sometimes people think about this as waiting at a bus stop for a bus. And if you've already waited for a certain number of seconds for the bus to come, then this does not make that bus arrival more likely uh, than if you just arrived and hadn't waited the S seconds already. 
And sometimes that's a confusing concept to be thinking about. In the case of the bus example that I just gave, it's not generally a good example. It's a common example, but it's not a good example. And just to help you with the intuition on that, the reason it's not a good example is because buses arrive generally on a regular time schedule. So they are not independent arrivals, buses at a bus stop. And so that's why it's often easy to get tricked by this when you, if you're using that particular example, which is a common example, but it's not a good example, as I just said. So the better way to think about this is to remind ourselves that the arrivals are independent in a Poisson process. And because they're independent, just because you've waited for S seconds and haven't seen one, it doesn't make one any more likely to appear in the next T seconds than the probability that it happened from the start over a period of t seconds because they're independent in a Poisson process. So hopefully that helps you to understand the memoryless nature of the exponential distribution in the Poisson process. So if this video has helped you to understand Poisson processes, Poisson distribution and exponential distribution, then uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, tell your friends about the video. Uh, check out the web page in the link below the video. Uh, where you'll find a full categorized listing of all the videos that are on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.